fare with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop, and I race them both on and off-road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The List. I'm Patrick McIntyre. And I'm Jesse Combs. Today, we're going to do something a little different than the items that we've checked off the list in the past. Normally, we would show you something that every car enthusiast should do before they die. But today, we're going to do something that we hope you never have to do. But if you do, you want to succeed at it. Now, we're going to be using that crane and this car, which you may remember from a few of our past episodes, to see if we have what it takes to escape a car underwater. Now, there's a couple different schools of thought on technique. And we're going to get all the facts and fundamentals and give it a try. Where we're standing here in Southern California at sea level on an average day is we're experiencing about 14.7 PSI. 33 feet of water is equivalent to 14.7 PSI. We call that one atmosphere. That car door is about 1,700 square inches. For every foot of water, you're exerting about 850 pounds of pressure on that door. Good luck opening it. Okay, so you said there's two schools of thought here. There are. One is that we're gonna go to the bottom and wait for the car to fill up with water. You're gonna breathe calmly and keep lifting your head higher and higher as the water raises higher and higher. When you finally get that last breath, suck it all in, wait for the car to fill up the rest of the way, open the door, and go for the light. The second school of thought is the OSCO method, which is open the door, remove your seatbelt, grab your kids, and get out. Mike, where is this most likely to happen to me that I'm actually going to find myself in the water? Well, annually, there are approximately 400 vehicle-related drownings in the United States. Generally, the large coastal states, California, Florida, the East Coast, that have a lot large bodies of water. A lot of these deaths can be attributed to uh, alcohol or fatigue. Now, do you want to tell us a little bit about your role and what we need to know to make sure everything goes smoothly? Well, I'm going to be the safety diver, and I'll be riding along with you in the back seat of the car there. But you're going to be breathing on your own. You're going to be doing most of this on your own. Just in case there's an emergency, that's what they brought me in for. What we've got here is a, an aluminum 80 tank. There's 80 cubic feet of air at 3,000 PSI. Plenty of air for what we're doing, no problem. Both your air supply for the driver's seat and for me in the back seat are being fed off of this one tank. What I have is the primary regulator for you on a retractor. Now, because it is on a retractor, you might have to cinch down on the mouthpiece a little bit. Go ahead and take a breath from it. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing about dropping the car in the water is, is safety. In this case, we had to drain all the fluids out, pressure wash it. Uh, we want to make it nice and clean in there and nice and safe. Uh, so we removed all the things that don't need to be inside the vehicle. We also put some extra holes in there for drainage. All right. <laughs> I'm up first, first time around. They're gonna lower me into the water. I'm gonna let the vehicle fill up with water. I'm gonna get that one last breath, like this is some horrible accident in a submarine movie. And then I'm gonna hold my breath, wait for it to fill all the way up, open the door, and swim on out, hopefully. All right, Greg. Okay, let's just go over the hand signals real quick. Okay, real quick. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. okay. Uh, this is a problem. Problem. And I want and my ass end up. up. Yep. Okay. Okay. I feel like every episode we do, I say I just wanna make it out of this alive. And today, that is more true than ever. All right, uh, I am in the car, and they're lowering me down into the water now. And it's just a waiting game at this point, just waiting until the car fills up with water, until it's okay for me to take the seatbelt off and get the out of here. Right. Here we go. And drop. Okay, we hit the water. He's filling up quick. All right, so you want to make sure you let the car fill up with water. Very difficult to do. The water's cold. It's very cold. And I want to let it get up as far as it can to pressurize the doors. This is freezing. Oh. Don't freak out.
That first time when they lower you inside, once that water hits your body, it is a shock. I was not ready for the temperature of that water. How you feeling? I'm nervous. Yeah, it's okay. You'll be fine. Just, just remember. First of all, don't freak out. <laughs> Take that last breath, but there's plenty of time between the time that the door opens and that last bit of oxygen. But the door might not open right away. I had to pull it a couple times. I got nervous. I thought it was locked, so. Okay. You guys ready? Good? Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Everything's gonna be just fine. You'll be all right. Jeez, f dude. Who does this? Why, why do we put ourselves in this situation? Are you okay? Oh, don't worry about me. <laughs> Stop! Holy cow, okay, let's pull this at my ankle. It's coming in, I can see it's right around my feet. My heart is definitely beating. Alright, now it's coming up around my feet. to be one of those days where I was actually scared. That's a very rare thing for me. All right, it's time for method number two, which is open the door as soon as I hit the water. The problem with this is, as you go down, there's more water pressure pushing against it, upwards of a thousand pounds. So if I try and eke out, it might get my legs stuck inside there and I might get dragged down with it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's okay, that's not as bad. I recommend that. Get that seatbelt off, open the door, and get out. All right, so now I'm gonna check the levels. I'm gonna let the water go up a little bit and try and open the door this time. See how long it takes before I can actually push it open. Let the water fill up a little bit, get the seatbelt off. A little further, it's down under my feet, it is cold. I'm gonna let the water get almost up my chest before I try the door. Okay, all right, I'm gonna try the door. <coughs> that is not happening. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to wait, it's not gonna go. Dead. 
That didn't go as smooth that time. It was a lot of struggle. I was braced up against the, the center armrest. So I was pushing as hard as I could. I tried to put my foot into it. And then there was that moment of like, it's not happening. It's time to grab that air. And I can't, I just, I, I'm trying to think and put myself in the situation where like, you know, I, I just got in an accident. I'm jarred from that. There's water flush, flushing in. I'm trying to get myself in that headspace of like, you know, not freaking out, but even here in a controlled situation, you still freak out. Now I'm gonna get in the car. I'm gonna wait for the water to get up to my waist on the inside of the car, try and open the door. Pretty sure it's not gonna happen, so I know exactly where that regulator is. Just in case. What's happening is the crane is dropping the car faster. And the weight of the engine is pulling the front end of the car down, so the front end is filling up with water faster. I'm in the front. All the air is in the back of the car. I can't hold my breath that long. That is a very scary situation. If I didn't have air, I would I would have been gone. What about like when you get down and like rolling the window down to help kind of like the car equalize faster? That would be great as long as the window has not been hit by the water. Once that water pressure starts pushing against the window, it's gonna jam it up against the rails and you're not gonna be able to operate. You guys today are fully prepared. You have a window punch in your car. Right. So this is a last resort. You can't get the door open. You're gonna take it and slam it right against the center of the window. That window will shadow and you're gonna climb out of it. All right, so this center punch here is one of the only things on the market that is designed to break the window to get you out in a situation like this. I just want to see it in action. And since we're in a controlled environment, I'm going to protect my eyes from shattered glass, and I'm going to go ahead and use the regulator again so there's no freaking out. <laughs> Well, I can tell you from experience, it works. And I got a little bit of a battle scar from it. As Soon as I put it up against the window, gave it a push, the mechanism inside popped. You could hear the window just shatter. I saw it just dissolve in front of my face. Got a little cut and then just a flood of water came rushing in. It's intense, but it works. I don't recommend going out the window though. So there you have it, a couple different methods for escaping a car underwater. We highly suggest to get out of the car as quickly as possible. Or if you know that you're going to be in shallow waters, wait it out, hold your breath, and you'll be able to get to safety. And of course, if things get really bad, there's always the center punch as well to keep in the car. Now that we've officially checked this off our list, let's do some things that people want to do before they die. I have to fully agree with you. Thanks for watching the list. We'll see you guys next time.